Hello, my name is Carol and this is my channel, So Carol. I'm not in my sewing room today, I'm away on holiday in the Canary Islands, but I did have some sewing things to report, so I thought I would do a very short Hashtag Friday Sews. Now, I will say that I'm, I mean, apologise if I'm not looking at the camera, but I'm recording on something I don't normally recall on, and that's my tiny iPad. Um, it's balanced on some cartons of apple juice and some books and yeah and the lighting's not great and you've got the background noise of the restaurant down below but I'm, I'm trying to do my best here. Now uh, I wanted to make some Dorset buttons while I was away and I particularly made them on the plane on the way over. So it's about a five hour flight. Um, we, we were delayed and it was for absolutely crazy reason and it's nothing to do with sewing but I will tell you because it's quite amusing but we were taxiing off on the runway just about to get to the runway when I think one of the pilots spotted that a birthday balloon a child's fifth birthday balloon had been sucked into one of the engines so they had to turn the engine off so we then had to go back to the stand to get all the engines um, looked at and everything to make sure it was safe before we could set off. Luckily, it didn't take a very long time um, and we were back and it was all fine and, and we could set off. So we were only about two hours delayed, but it did mean I was on the plane for that bit longer. So I managed to do some things. Now, first of all, the first button I did was a complete disaster. Um, I tried to do the ammonite. I've got to be careful with the camera this one. The ammonite version and this is what it was and no it didn't come out anything like it whatsoever and because my idea was kind of be going to do kind of christmas buttons i thought then i'd have a go at the open star that i had more success with first of all i did it in a small button in some sparkly red thread um, i'm not sure if you can see that or not and then i did it in a larger version <laughs> Now that I think came out really well on that bigger size of button. So this I think could make just something nice to attach to a Christmas present or something. So I'm going to make some more of these at this size. Um, but yeah, they're really cute. So I really enjoyed doing that. That was the open star. I managed to get hold of this book um, a couple of months ago. All sorts of Dorset ring buttons. Um, if you've never come across it before, I live in Dorset in the UK and it's very traditional for the area that I live in. They go back hundreds of years, so yeah, that's why I thought I'd start sort of doing the odd thing every now and again. I have got some sewing to report, but it's um, because of my lapse in sewing actually quality. I've been using my backpack that I made and I made this in um, uh, the Busy Bee Club. It was the last thing where you had to make a free bag pattern. Um, it was out of this map fabric. And the pattern was, wasn't very good at all. But what happened, the first time I wore it, um, admittedly I had a lot of stuff in it, but one of these straps started to come away. The fabric had frayed and it was on its sort of last couple of threads. So I had to do some sewing. Um, and to re-sew it in, so I had to unpick this. I didn't have any, all I had was baby scissors um, to unpick it. But luckily, I have this sewing kit in my suitcase that I have traveled many times with it. I never used this cute little sewing kit. <laughs> and you know what it's like, you get a tiny bit of thread and some needles that really aren't that sharp at all. But I did manage to unpick this using baby scissors and sew it all back up again. Um, yeah, my fault entirely. What I should have done with these straps first is to seal the ends, surge the ends so that it didn't fray because that's what had happened. Where it was encased in this top flap, the fabric just frayed and it came away. So that's what I should have done. Um, but yeah, I then mended it and it then went on to go on uh, another walking trip with me, fully laden, and it was absolutely fine. So yeah, I've done some sewing. I must report that the crossbody bag I made from Adam Sew's pattern has been amazing. I made it in this cork um, and in the end I chickened out on doing a strap. I tried so many things and in the end I bought a navy leather strap. 
and that works absolutely fine. I have to say it doesn't look too bad at all and this bag I have used every day and I'm really really pleased with it. So thank you again Adam for creating this pattern and giving me the courage to make it up. Now the last thing I'm going to report on actually is the sewing books that I have read whilst I've been away. I've written them down. So I've read two and three quarter sewing books so far. Um, we've got today's Friday and we've got half a day left for me to finish the last one. But first of all, I read The Dressmaker's Secret by Laura Cook. That was a brilliant book, but it was absolutely no talk of sewing whatsoever, apart from the fact that it was all about Coco Chanel in Paris during the war. In fact, all the books I read were based in the 1930s for some reason, but this one was during the Second World War. And what I found absolutely fascinating was I didn't realise what Coco Chanel kind of got up to in the Second World War, um, everything about her business and how it is um, implied that she collaborated with the Nazi Germany. I'm going to be very careful on my words. But as it was a fiction book, I thought, well, surely this can't be true. And then I started reading about Coco Chanel and everything that came out that she got up to in the Second World War. Yeah, so uh, it was a good book, but it wasn't anything about sewing. Um, the Dressmaker's Secret was more about the fact uh, about Coco Chanel that had the secret about the wall. But it was a really good book and a real eye-opener to what went on uh, with the resistance and things like that in the Second World War. So yeah, good book. The second one I read was The Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. Now, the reason I actually got this book was the fact it was to do with, it was based in England in early 1930s, so between the First and Second World War, and it was based on the true story of the Nila cushions in Winchester Cathedral. Now, Winchester is very, very close to Adam and um, about 40 minutes from me, so I found it really fascinating. And it was about a group of women that were brought together to recreate and add some colour to Winchester Cathedral and replace the Nila cushions. It was absolutely fascinating. Very little to do about sewing, apart from when they introduced the, the different stitches they did for these Nila cushions, which I find brilliant. Um, so I looked them all up and to kind of refresh my memory on um, needlepoint. So that was really good. I would say though, it was actually more about bell ringing than um, about embroidery. Good story though, and because it was sort of based local to me, I found it fascinating. And now I actually want to go to Winchester Cathedral, which I've never been to, and actually look at the cushions that these people had made. You can uh, Google it online. It was based on, uh, I think the lady was called Louisa Paisel. And she was the lady that got all these um, group of women together, volunteers, to sew up these uh, knee locations. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to um, actually take a trip up there and have a look at them now. So another great book to read for me, you know, kind of with a bit of interest. The one I'm on now, um, sort of three quarters of the way through, was The Dressmaker of Da Chow, Da Chow, from Mary Chamberlain. Again, Second World War, this one. Um, it's about a, a English girl that gets caught up in uh, abroad uh, during and the Second World War um, outbreak and she actually works as a dressmaker and she ends up having to make up dresses for the German sort of Nazi leaders uh, women. Um, kept prisoner, it's really sad because it's just awful that, that what did go on then but she does describe how she has to make up from complete scratch all these patterns and these dresses where these German women would come to her and give her these designs. So it is complete fiction, but it, it is really incredible to hear her talk about the patterns and the fabric and then what she did with the dresses. So that to me has been the one kind of book that's been about sewing. Now, they've all been kind of with a bit of romance in them and I, I don't like romance books and normally I do tend to read crime so this was very different for me but really all enjoyable. Now I do hope you have enjoyed hearing about those books and maybe encourage you to read one. Um, 
yeah, it's entirely my opinion. You might have read these books and have a completely different opinion, but yeah, it has been just great just to sit and read these books because I don't tend to have time at home because I like to be in my sewing room. The one other thing I was going to update you on was the beach bag that I made and that was in a collab with the uh, five of us, Adam, Andra, Jen, Trish and myself. I made this beach bag with, with all these pockets. Um, I have to say, absolutely love the bag. It's got exactly the right capacity, but it now has so many pockets around the outside, we actually get confused what's in what. So we are still hunting around. In hindsight, what I should have done is either put a bit of sort of bias, colour bias tape at the top so we could work out which had our phones in and our Kindles in and things like that because we do tend to, because it's got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets around the outside and we have to tend to go around all of them to find what we put in. So yeah, it's been a great beach bag but maybe I should have labelled the pockets somehow so we can find things a lot quicker. Thank you so much for joining me today on a very quick hashtag Friday Sews from the Canaries. I apologise for the bad lighting and if I'm not looking at the camera and the noise in the background. It's a beautiful day here today, so now I'm going to go and finish reading this last book. Thank you again and join me next week back, on, back in my sewing room. Hopefully I have done some sewing. And I wish you all a wonderful weekend and thanks for joining me. Bye bye for now.